Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Duan. I'm here to present our work towards measuring supply chain attacks on packaging managers for interpreting languages. In software development uh, process, developers will be writing software that runs on devices and used by end users. OSS maintainer will be publishing their code to source hosting services such as GitHub and then host them on pack managers such as NPM. Developers will be reusing uh, OSS maintainer's code to avoid reinventing the wheels. However, we notice that there is currently little to no review process for publishing packages to many packing managers. And packing managers are actually being attacked. For example, EventStream is a package in NPM that was abused to affect over 8 million downloads. Similarly, backdoor uh, Docker images were downloaded over 5 million times and earned the criminals over 90,000 uh, bucks. To this end, we set our goals to understand and prevent supply chain attacks. In particular, we aim to analyze the workflow and attacks to understand the root cause. Based on these insights, we want to detect new malware and measure them. And we also want to propose some uh, actionable improvements and suggestions. While prototyping, we focus on the packing managers that was most uh, attacked. In packing management uh, workflow, registries are actually just web apps with a server component that hosts packages and the client component that fetches packages. Packing maintainers are suppliers in the ecosystem. They may optionally install some packages and integrate them into their own packages and publish through accounts. Developers are consumers in the ecosystem. They select and install packages. End users are just like as a downstream and they use content from developers. Note that these uh, names here are actually just uh, rules. They can be uh, referred to the same person. We further uh, zoom into registry maintainers and classify security related uh, features into three categories. Functional, which refers to how you use a registry. Security, which refers to uh, actively checking and waiting submitted code. Uh, sadly, few, few registries have uh, security features as of now. Remediation refers to uh, actions when something goes wrong. This includes removing packages and uh, notifying uh, victims. Uh, we look into the malware reported by the community and propose threat model in two aspects, attack vectors and uh, malicious behaviors. For example, attackers can directly exploit the registry or they can like uh, publish a typo score package or a random name package. On the other hand, attackers can also abuse the accounts of existing users. They can compromise the account or they can ask them to transfer the ownership. We have also seen attackers target the upper stream uh, packing maintainers by, uh, for example, acting as a malicious contributor or act as a disgruntled insider. There are also cases that uh, try to compromise the infrastructure of packing maintainers to achieve uh, the spread. From behavior point of view, we find that this malware can be used to steal things like uh, passwords or crypto coins. They can also be used to like uh, plant backdoors into machines to allow further control. There are also sabotage uh, malware that uh, can do logic bomb things, or they can be used to uh, mine bitcoins to abuse the uh, computing power. We also seen cases that tries to spread them through uh, packing maintainers or just proof of concept uh, packages. The root cause of these uh, supply chain attacks is actually a broken trust. As a central authority in the ecosystem, registry maintainers have to be trust. However, registry maintainers don't have to trust others, including pack maintainers and developers. So the security gap is there is currently little to no vetting or manual review, review process. And the account protection is not sufficient. While the account protection can be enhanced by multi-factor or other mechanisms, we note that the vetting process is not easily done. We want to go further into this uh, direction. We notice that the, num the number of uh, large dependencies in this uh, used by these uh, packages actually impedes the analysis speeds. 
Also, these packages are written in dynamically typed interpreting languages, and this can lead to inaccuracy if you only perform study analysis. Also, uh, whenever you claim something is malware, you have to um, manually inspect and verify. To this end, we propose an analysis pipeline that performs virus analysis. It's a prototype that can be adopted by registry maintainers, but also a tool which we use to identify new malware. We perform static analysis, dynamic analysis, and metadata analysis. We derive a set of heuristic rules, which we get from uh, inspecting the known malware to identify uh, suspicious packages. We then manually review the results to identify malicious ones and then update the uh, rules. The plot here shows how interpreted packages work. They run on top of runtime environment and can depend on other packages. They may also have binaries that can circumvent language runtime and directly talk to the system. In static analysis, we focus on analyzing interpreted languages and focus on interaction between the package and the runtime environment. In API analysis and uh, data flow analysis, we perform modularized uh, static analysis by working up the dependency tree and summarize the dependencies. Alternatively, one can analyze a package together with its dependencies, but we found this to be slow for packages with many dependencies. In dynamic analysis, we focus on tracing system calls during execution. The execution here means install a package invoking the embedded binaries, or import it and then invoke the functions. We isolate the execution using Docker and trace the execution using Sysdict. We look at the queries, including IP queries and DNS queries. We also look at file operations and process operations. In metadata analysis, we focus on aggregating packages by various information such as uh, authors, release patterns. We also identify type of scoring candidates of popular packages. We also check uh, suspicious types of uh, files in packages, such as embedded binaries or native extensions. With the three above analysis, we define an initial set of heuristic rules derived from observations of existing attacks. This is a brief summary of them please uh, refer to our paper for a detailed list. Using the vetting pipeline, we analyze packages from PyPy, NPM, RubyGems, which sums to over a million packages. We have identified uh, 339 malware in total, out of which 82% of them have been removed by registry maintainers, and three of them have been assigned CVEs. In addition, we have been tracking uh, attacks reported by the community since January 2018 and collected information for community-related uh, malware, which amounts to 312. For these uh, 651 malware, we analyze them in multiple dimensions, including attack vector, malicious behavior, etc. For attack vector, this plot shows the breakdown of malware by amount, by count, and we note that type of squat and publish are popular probably because you can directly publish anything. There is no review process. Account compromise is popular. This is kind of surprising. Uh, this is probably because uh, weak credentials or compromised uh, passwords are being used by uh, package maintainers. Uh, this plot again shows the breakdown of uh, malware by uh, malicious behaviors. We note that stealing, backdoor, and cryptojacking are popular uh, among these uh, behaviors. Stealing, uh, our further investigation shows that lots of them are actually uh, just collecting machine and user information, which is less uh, severe. In contrast, backdoor for is actually severe because they allow takeover. On the other hand, we note that cryptojacking is actually getting increasingly popular. Uh, probably because they allow monetization even without a high permission. To understand this uh, malware more, we also query the uh, registries for their download data and their uh, persistent data. 
we find that 20% 20, 20 of them are actually are, are downloaded more than a thousand times and 20% of them have persist in registries for over 400 days. We then correlate the persistent days with our download data and find that there are actually 18 packages that uh, have been downloaded more than 100,000 times. And out of which, four are actually reported by us. In particular, this RSA compat uh, is reported by us but not removed uh, because it's tracking users. NPM replies that they are drafting user tracking policies, and this implies that the boundaries between maliciousness and benign would be uh, need some more work. In addition to downloads of uh, this malware, we want to show their impact. First, uh, we highlight their impacts that are amplified by their dependents. Take the four most popular malware as an example. Their own downloads sums to 700 million, but they actually are dependent uh, by 24,000 uh, packages. And if we count all these dependent packages as well, we can get a download of 3.5 billion. This implies that the amplification factor by dependency is actually 4.5. Although this number can be inflated because uh, installing a dependent package may also include, may also install the original malicious package. But uh, the idea here is to show that the differences between uh, supply chain attacks on package managers versus uh, uh, attacks on like uh, mobile stores is that the packages in package managers can be uh, in amplified by their dependents. Second, we want to measure whether this malware are downloaded and executed by real users and developers. We we'll collaborate with a major ISP to query their passive uh, DNS database. The data in 2017 is partially missing. We aggregate the data of the DNS queries by month and present their volume here. Uh, the domains are actually from malware, excluding those uh, popular ones. First, we check uh, REST client, uh, which uses uh, the domain com.ua. We find that uh, it's actually installed and executed. The second malware we check is Android Audio Recorder, which was actually taken down on December 2018. However, we notice queries for it even after that. We further uh, investigate and find that there is actually no advisory for this example, which means that um, the victims are not aware of the issue and remain uh, infected. So the the third one we, we check is the, mal is the domain used by crypto miners called uh, ptpp.pw. The service owner actually complains about abuses from crypto miners and then they he then decides to shut down the domain. This shows that we can possibly uh, correlate campaigns as well. Based on the aforementioned uh, findings, we propose improvements for registry maintainers and suggestions for other stakeholders. For functional features, registry maintainers can uh, protect accounts, prevent typos. Security-wise, they can adopt uh, our pipeline or use social voting to uh, crowdsource the manual review. Remediation-wise, they can remove uh, installed malware and also notify the uh, affected uh, victims. For package maintainers, uh, they can protect their own accounts and be cautious about uh, contributors. They can also report uh, security issues and timely update their dependencies. They can join social voting. Developers, they can uh, like use private registries with known secure versions, but this doesn't guarantee all. They also need to check advisories and patch or update timely. They can also join our social voting. End users can use AV tools or official websites. This is a uh, list of our limitations. And this is a list of our uh, closest uh, related works. Uh, to summarize, uh, our work uh, model the packaging management workflow and find the root causes of supply chain attacks to be security gaps and incorrect trust model. We prototype a vetting pipeline and identified 339 malware, 80%, 82% of which were removed and three were assigned CVEs. We also provide actionable improvements for registry maintainers and suggestions for other stakeholders. Thank you.